Hi, Paul here. This is a super quick guide to making your own sampled instrument, sampling yourself so that you can be creative, sound a little bit different from everybody else. We're going to make a guitar effects pedal type sound today. Really simple. I'm going to show you how to record it, put it together in Logic and then also in Contact and how you make those adjustments to make it sound really great and playable. Here we go. So here we are, I'm creating these samples across the range of the instrument. You don't have to record every semitone, you can kind of record maybe every tone or third. Um, it'll still sound great and it's simpler to put together in the end. Okay, so I've got my uh, all my regions here with my lovely guitar performance. And what I'm going to do now is just control X, which brings up the remove silence option. Let's turn the post release time up, pre attack time. Let's set that to 0.1. So that gives me a tenth of a second before, which will be 4800 samples at 48K. We've just got a couple of little dodgy bits. So if we just zoom into here, I just need to join those back together again. Come on, Jay. Just joins that back together again. All of these look okay. Oh, I've got one missing there. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this region back out again and just redo my control X thingy bob. Okay, so I'm going to take all of these regions. Uh, there's probably a simpler way to do this, but and then we're just going to export those regions. Okay, now if you're working in Logic, we can now put up a new sampler. And then I just need to get my newly created samples and just drag them over here. Uh, zone per file or zone per note, we want zone per file. Uh, it analyzes them. I'll show you how to do this in contact as well. Uh, but this is a super quick and easy way to do it in, in Logic. Okay, so it's given us a um, guesstimate of our note values. Is it? Has it worked it out? Let's have a look. Okay, that's good. So we want to set the ADSR. Just so we get the nice kind of, a nice fade out. Right, now. I've got a very heavy left balance to the, um, to the source sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to my advantage and I'm going to make every other zone kind of over to the right, but by different amounts. I'm just kind of, and the top one, let's just, okay, so let's see what that sounds like. Okay, let's have a go. Cool. Okay, so that's quite useful. Let's just save that down. So the first thing to do is to double click in the window here to create a new uh, empty default instrument. I'm going to pop up the uh, various windows here. So you'll see we've got some kind of default stuff. Let's get the samples back up. First up, we've got E. Okay, that's good. Then we've got a G. That goes on there. Bam, that's a C. All good. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to click this button here, which just spreads everything out. So just let's, I'm just going to restrict the range a little bit so it's not kind of crazy making. Um, and then I'm going to click and drag across all the regions. So I'm going to set sample start to 4800. I'm going to click this cog and then say to all selected zones, copy current sample start settings. Now, I can see already that that's not totally bang on. Uh, and you can just check them all to make sure they're all nice and tight here. Just zooming in to have a little look. Just 
give it a tiny bit of space at the front there. Yeah, all good. Yeah, you can see Logic hasn't totally managed to work out the correct exact start times on these. If you edit in Pro Tools, which I often do to make samples, this is a lot easier because you're looking at the waveform first and then setting your uh, start points back afterwards. I can see there's a bit of nonsense at the end there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, the next thing to check is the uh, envelope. So we're just going to put a tiny bit of attack to remove any clicks, and then we'll increase that to whatever. We want a bit of velocity sensitivity, so we click in the amplifier section mod here. You can see velocity is set a little bit low. So now they're all quite quiet. So I'm just going to go in and set them all to 12 dB up. And then I'll just have a quick playthrough and see if any feel too quiet. So turn that up a couple of dB. That one. Okay, all sounds good. Right, now I'm going to do my same trick with the left right, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. Uh, some might say properly. <laughs> so what we need to do is we control click here and we duplicate our group. Now I'm going to call this uh, so group one and then uh, group one right left. Uh, take off edit all groups so we're just dealing with this one group one right left. Then I'm going to say add effects and in utilities here we'll find an inverter and we're going to click left right swap. Now if I solo this group, you can hear now that everything is on the right hand side. That nice twang at the beginning of the notes on the right instead of the left. So as you can see, we can see all of the samples in here. So we want to go selected groups only. So we're just looking at the samples in the group that we're working on. I'm going to start on the left. So we'll remove the bottom note from there and then we'll remove every other one as we go up like this. And we're left with the top one. Then I'll go to group one and delete all of the ones that we just kept in the right left group. And now if we turn off selected groups and you can see all the samples are there, but obviously half of them in the left group, half of them are in the right group. Now, what does that sound like? That's quite cool. Obviously, it's a bit hacky and you could do this lots of different ways, but that's how you create a, an incredibly quick and easy sample library. Let's call this our um, uh, guitar vibe FX. And then we simply save edited instrument and we'll stick it in there. Oops, <laughs> recreated all the samples. OK, that's worth knowing when you go save. Uh, you get a couple of options down here. You can create a monolith, you can do the patch and samples, or just the patch with the absolute sample paths. So I'm going to uh, do that one and we'll replace it, and then I can get rid of these um, samples here. Okay, links to both of those instruments down below with the samples. Hope that was useful. Super quick guide to making your own sample instrument. Let me know what else you want to know about in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.